Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. So, oh, who wants to see what the Ohio World Damage Record looks like? Oh, I don't care what you want, that's what you're going to see. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, the title of the video probably gave it away. Uh, I'm trying out one of those clickbait titles and thumbnails in this episode. So, anyway, this is Very Honorbra. I'm, I'm going to have problems saying that name throughout the entire video. I may just end up calling him Dave. Um, in the US Navy Tier 10 battleship, the USS Ohio. Very similar to the Montana, but with significant differences. The Ohio is a research bureau ship, so it's technically sort of a premium, but it, you don't have to spend any money on it. Uh, anybody can get this just by resetting a ship line in the research bureau and grinding this thing out. I think it costs 62,000 research points. And it has exactly the same hull as the Montana. It's a very nice hull, I'm sure you'll agree. Montana's a very pretty ship. Whereas the Montana is armed with 12 16-inch guns, which I don't know if it still does, but it, it definitely meant that the Montana used to have the heaviest weight of fire in the game with that massive main battery salvo. And the Ohio's eight 18 inch guns, while they are larger caliber, do not have the same weight of fire, which may seem like a downgrade from the Montana. Except these 18 inch guns do come with some very, very big benefits that the Montana does not enjoy. For a start, they have a shorter reload. Yeah, it doesn't seem really fair that ships like the Montana, with 16-inch guns, have a 30-second reload, which is standard for battleships. The Ohio's 18-inch guns, bigger guns, only have a 27.5-second reload. Plus, by virtue of the fact that they are 18-inch guns, they can do things to cruisers that the Montana cannot. These guns can penetrate 30 millimeters of armor plating. Well, they can penetrate a hell of a lot more than that. The armor-piercing shells fired by this ship have extremely good penetration, but they can overmatch 30 millimeters of plating, something that 16-inch guns cannot do. And that means the Ohio is very, very good at deleting cruisers that typically, at tier 10 at least, tend to have around about 30 millimeters of deck plating in the midship section. They're also very, very accurate. I mean, it's not as if the Montana's known for being an inaccurate battleship in the first place. Some sneaky opening hits on the enemy Montana there for an early 4,725 damage. Not huge, but, you know, it's a nice start. But the Ohio's 18-inch guns have the same accuracy and dispersion as those found on the 15-inch guns of the legendarily accurate Tier 6 British battleship HMS Warspite. The Ohio's guns all that good. Oh, and there's the citadels on the cruisers that we were looking for. The very unfortunate French cruiser, the Brest over there. Yeah, I know, I know. Brest jokes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, 30 millimeters of overmatch means that at any range a cruiser is in trouble if this thing starts shooting at it. Well, you know, unless it's a Russian cruiser like the Stalingrad or the Moskva, which have 50 millimeters of plating in places because Russia. But aside from that, if you're in a cruiser, like the Worcester over there that he just shot at, and you find yourself getting targeted by an Ohio, dodge or hide, whatever. Just don't get shot at by an Ohio. It will probably be extremely painful. Of course, that doesn't mean battleships are gonna be immune either. Although most battleships at this tier, in fact most battleships from tier 8 and up, although not all, tend to have 32mm of deck plating. Which means that they're going to be reasonably safe to plunging fire at long range from this thing. When this thing gets close, it's going to punch right through your belt armour. And if you have an exposed citadel, that is also going to be really, really painful. Oh, he's missed the finishing shot on the breast. That was unfortunate. I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere. <laughs> oh, well, that's this video demonetized. Yes, anyway. Oh, yes, of course. So, yeah, world damage record in the Ohio. You've probably noticed this is an arms race battle. And to be completely honest, that's probably where most, if not all, of the world damage records are likely to occur. 
purely by virtue of the fact that there's so much more health available to be farmed in an arms race battle for reasons that I'll get onto in a moment but I just want to point out that this is while it is a tier 10 battle it's not an all tier 10 battle oh hello little destroyer you got spotted pinned up against an island there that's not going to be good and yeah these are 18 inch armor piercing shells and anything that hits is of course going to be an over penetration because it's a destroyer small target virtually non-existent armor but Destroyers can afford to lose health less than other types of ships, so any hit on a destroyer is a valuable hit. What was I talking about? Oh yes, as he lines up on another cruiser. Oh dear, this is looking painful. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I, I will eventually stick to the point. Oh, this is going to hurt, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that definitely hurt. Uh, no citadels though. Harlem survives. For now. But yes, I was talking about the fact that this is an arms race battle. And um, you do tend to have more health available to be farmed in arms race battles. And I'll explain why in a moment, it's just in case. I mean, most of you probably already know. But this, while it is a tier 10 battle, because he's in a tier 10 battleship, it's not an all tier 10 battle. There are a lot of tier 8 in this battle. Most of the cruisers and all of the destroyers. Which means that there is less health available to be farmed overall than you typically see in a tier 10 arms race battle. Which makes the fact that this is the world damage record in the USS Ohio. Just that little bit more impressive. But why do you always get these world damage records in arms race? Well, simply put, because of the buffs that you get in arms race. The team can pick up buffs that increase the maximum health of the ships, that repair any damage that the ships have sustained, all kinds of good things like that. So it's not unusual, if there is a world damage record, to see it happening in an arms race battle. In fact, I'd be very surprised if there was a world damage record in any class or type of ship out there that doesn't occur in an arms race battle. But to be fair, that does just mean that the competition for the world damage record in any given ship is just so much higher, because other people in the same ship are also playing arms race. And given that there are a lot of tier 8s in this battle that do not have the massive amounts of health of the various different tier 10s that does make this just that little bit more impressive Ooh, there's that breast again oh we get oh you've got to be kidding <laughs> somebody finish him please anybody come on team you've only managed to kill one ship between you and it was a tier 8 cruiser the edinburgh no stop dying yourselves kill the enemy ships i know i said we need more kills but i meant enemy ships <laughs> right the team have lost five casualties and they are continuing to fail to pick up any kills of their own. Uh, the key area is appearing in a minute. So again, for those of you who aren't familiar with Arms Race, and yes, there is a bit of a replay bug, as you can see at the top of the screen, uh, the UI is telling us that the key area is going to appear in about 52 years, um, roughly halfway through an Arms Race battle, because there are no capture points until the key area appears. And this is the only capture point, And the team that manages to capture that wins. As well as the standard ways of winning, reach a thousand points, or sink all of the enemy ships, which the enemy team at the moment are well on the way to doing. That breast really needs to die. Yes, finally, the implacable took him out. Tier 8 carrier, by the way. There is a carrier in play, but it is only tier 8. So, oh, and they've managed to pick up another kill as well. Things are not looking quite as bad. Now, the thing about that key area when it appears is there's another very interesting mechanic with the capture point and it has just become available in arms race it starts off if you look at the map you can see that central key area and it's a fairly big capture point but as the battle goes on it gets smaller and smaller and smaller which forces the ships into close combat and can make the last five minutes or so of an arms race battle very interesting indeed Dave's team just picked up a health regen buff. And again, you know, this is one of the reasons why there's so much more damage available to be farmed in arms race, because you can do 16,000 damage like that to a Worcester, and then he hides, passively heals it all back up, and then when you see him, again, it looks like you never did the 16,000 damage, which just means you get to do that 16,000 damage all over again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You're supposed to hide Worcester. <laughs> Let's see what damage this does. Remember, it's a Worcester. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Dave's first kill. The Worcester's not going to get to passively regenerate any of that. They're still losing, 
actually no no they're ahead on points not quite sure how they've lost more ships but they are ahead on points maybe it's because they're the only team that actually have ships in the capture point well they've got one less now <laughs> they've just lost their sixth ship uh, but that might be the case honestly i don't really know i don't know everything about the arms race games mode you probably noticed the coloured tracer that Dave's firing, and that with a Confederate award and the fireworks that just went off means that his main battery reload is now down to 14.4 seconds. <laughs> 18 inch guns firing every 14.4 seconds. So he has Bill Halsey as his commander, uh, and when you have Bill Halsey as your commander, and you score the Confederate Award, that reduces the reload of your guns. But he's already picked up several reload buffs, and he's probably got the Adrenaline Rush skill going. But that's actually really scary. A 14 point... F Oof, that one really hurt. The Keir Sarge is the one that actually finished him off, though. Nice to see the team pulling another kill back. But imagine, just stop and think about that for a second. You're facing a battleship that's on with 18-inch guns. And it has a 14.4 second reload. <laughs> that is terrifying. And the fact that this battleship, with the assistance of the Kearsarge, has now eliminated the final threat on this flank and is in a position to now start steaming north and catch all of you in a... Oh shit, torpedoes. Oh, he's going to take one, isn't he? Ah, could be worse. Yeah, he took one, although it did cause a flood. So he has had to use his damage control. But anyway, getting back to the main point, the fact that this battleship, armed with 18-inch guns, with a 14.4 second reload, has, with the assistance of the Kearsarge, managed to eliminate as the team loses their Thunderer. But he does a four... Holy shit! Was that 40,000 damage on the Montana? Can he do it again? <laughs> Look at the reload! Oh, oh, this has got to be... Is it? Oh, come on. Imagine living in a world where you get to say, oh, come on, he only did 15,000 damage with that salvo. <laughs> the reload's down to less than 14 seconds, by the way. <laughs> but, as I was trying to say before he bitch-slapped the bejesus out of the Montana there, with the destruction of the enemy Schlieffen, he's now in the position to sail right up this flank and get broadsides on everybody. Except the team... This is really weird, because the team have a very strong position. Because they've basically denied, or had denied, the central key area to the enemy team by virtue of having ships between them and it, but they keep dying. And I don't mean to be too critical of his team here. They have pretty much been on the back foot and been facing a bit of an uphill str- Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> right. Fine. Um, I don't know what his reload is now, but he's going to get to do that again very, very quickly. I'll be extremely surprised if the Montana gets away with that twice. Oh, he did! Come on. Referee! Oh, wait, no, the fire set by the secondaries got him. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Ohio's got some pretty good secondaries as well, but they kind of pale into insignificance to the main battery guns. But, yeah, the point I'm trying to make here is, well, you can't really blame the team because they have been facing a massive uphill struggle this entire game due to just losing so many ships. And, of course, the enemy team deserve credit for that. Ooh, ooh, second Montana shots out front turrets. And he is kind of angled. It's not doing him that much good, though. <laughs> Also, you don't have to give a huge amount of broadside in the Ohio in order to get the rear turrets firing, but, well, it's better to be safe than sorry. He doesn't need to expose broadside to that Montana in order to kill him. The Montana's doing all the broadside exposing that is necessary. So just wait. Oh, he's raised his aim there. Looks like he's going for gun turrets and superstructure. Ooh, carrier. <laughs> rear turrets away. He's finished the Montana. Shots already out at the Implacable. Shots on. Hang on, that doesn't. That looks small. Oh, it is a Lexington. Oh yeah, the friendly carrier is the Implacable, isn't it? Yeah, disappointing. Overpens, but no problem with the reload on these things. He gets to do that again very, very quickly. He's even spreading the shots out now. I mean, well, you know, cruiser boom headshot. <laughs> 
shot out again at the Lexington with the front turrets, although it looks like the Lexington's slowing, so there go the rear turrets again, the overpens. Oh, those weren't overpens. <laughs> front turrets again. This has got to be a kill, surely. Rear turrets, just in case. Oh, yep, yeah, he, he does need the rear turrets. Here comes the Lexington's aircraft. The Lexington is down, and that just leaves the Marlborough. Uh, tier 9, I believe. Also a terrible ship. <laughs> also giving broadside. <laughs> so as I kept trying to say, um, and Dave just did it, the team's only real advantage was their superior positioning, but as they kept losing ships, they were losing that positioning advantage. So Dave, on the flank here, kind of had to make hay while the sun was shining and do as much damage as possible and kill as many enemy ships as possible while he had their broadsides to shoot at. But as I kept trying to explain that, I'm constantly getting distracted by the huge damage numbers as Dave was administering the ass-kicking of a lifetime to as many ships as possible in as short a period of time as possible, Dave was doing exactly that. So, in case you're wondering what the world damage record in the USS Ohio when basically 459,000 damage looks like, uh, that's it. Unsurprising that it does occur, of course, in the arms race games mode, but kind of surprising that it occurred in an arms race games mode where around about half the team were not tier 10 and therefore did not have massive health pools worth of damage to be farmed. And yes, that's almost 4,000 base experience too, which probably isn't a record, but is probably very nearly a record of its own too. So, very honourable, also known as Dave. Extremely well done. Very enjoyable battle to watch. Thank you for sending it in. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it, because that's it for today. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.